Carrie Walsh is used to taking care of premature or very sick babies. She's an NICU nurse practitioner at Stony Brook University Hospital in New York. And while part of her job is comforting worried parents, she never imagined she'd one day need comforting herself. And as a practitioner, I always said, I have to many times give parents bad news and have lots of sit downs with parents. And I always considered myself being very empathetic to them, but I always left those meetings going, wow, I hope I never sit on that side of the table. But I did. Five years ago, Carrie delivered her son, Thomas, a full-term baby. She thought full-term meant Thomas wasn't in danger of life-threatening medical complications, but she was wrong. I entered this hospital just probably like any other mother, coming in expecting to have a baby, and uh, shortly after delivery, he was noted to have some respiratory distress. Soon after delivery, Thomas was diagnosed with persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn, or PPHN, a condition where blood was not circulating properly through his lungs and oxygen wasn't getting to his heart. At that point, I, I think I was playing both roles. I was being his mother and I was being very intellectual and being a nurse practitioner at the same time. By the next morning, Thomas needed the assistance of a ventilator and multiple chest tubes to survive and they came to me and said that they didn't know if he would live. For most babies, including Thomas, the cause is unknown. However, one condition called meconium aspiration syndrome has been linked to PPHN. This occurs when a full-term baby inhales meconium before or during delivery. Meconium is a bowel movement passed by the baby in the womb. Out of all pregnancies, it's uh, of babies who just pass meconium, it's actually a fairly common occurrence. About one in every seven or eight babies will pass it inside the womb. But about four or five percent of all of those who have passed this meconium inside um, uh, the uh, uterus will get it into their lungs. And they can have substantial respiratory distress. They can uh, have uh, as bad or even worse respiratory distress than, than some of our smallest premature babies. These babies uh, can die. For babies suffering from respiratory distress, the treatment is similar to that of premature babies with weak lungs. High-tech ventilators allow the baby to receive oxygen, and medications help to clear the lungs of unwanted particles. While in recovery, babies are kept safe from outside elements in shatter-resistant, easily sterilized plastic incubators. These advances in medicine and technology are what gave Thomas a new lease on life. Today, Thomas is a healthy, thriving boy. He's very intelligent, very self-sufficient, he's athletic, he's, and, and he's a very determined child. And determination is the reason Carrie believes Thomas is here today.